Texas is planning to build a $30 billion high-speed railway connecting Dallas and Houston. Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston are the fourth and fifth largest cities in the US, with a combined metro population of over 15 million people and a GDP of $1.1 trillion, slightly less than all of Mexico. Currently, the main means of transport between the two cities is Highway I-45. Every year, nearly 16 million journeys are made along the highway. Because of this, I-45 suffers from major congestion. Due to traffic, the three and a half hour long drive frequently approaches up to five hours. In addition, I-45 is one of the most dangerous highways in America. Between 2016 and 2019, there were a total of 260 fatalities along the route. This problem is only worsening. With both metropolises quickly expanding, by 2035, it is estimated that 34 million annual journeys will be made between the cities, increasing commute times to up to six and a half hours. Meanwhile, the cities are separated by only 360 kilometers of relatively flat, sparsely populated land. Because of this, visionaries have imagined building a high-speed rail line between Dallas and Houston. In the 1990s, several concepts were proposed, and a company named Texas TGV emerged with plans to build the railway. However, without a source of funding, the project collapsed. Then, in 2012, a group of private investors reintroduced the idea and formed a company called Texas Central Railway, with the goal of developing and constructing a high-speed railway between Dallas and Houston. That same year, they formed another company called Texas Central Partners to build and operate the service. Over the following years, Texas Central began conducting feasibility studies, and in 2014, they selected a preferred alignment for the high-speed rail line. Then, in 2015, they secured $75 million in private funding to begin development planning. Over the following years, they conducted environmental assessment reports and began efforts to acquire property along the route. In May 2018, they signed a deal with Bechtel for project management, and later, in September 2018, they secured a $300 million loan from the Japan Overseas Infrastructure Investment Corporation and Japan Bank for International Cooperation for design and engineering work. Shortly after, they made agreements with WeBuild and Renfe to build and operate the railway. Construction was planned to begin in 2021 and be completed by 2026. Over the following years, Texas Central continued planning, and finally, in May 2021, they signed $17.6 billion worth of final agreements with WeBuild, Lane Construction, Qwit, and Mass Electric Construction to build the high-speed railway. The Dallas-Houston High-Speed Railway would be 386 kilometers long. It would be its own dedicated corridor with no at-grade crossings and 55% of the railway on elevated viaducts, preserving access for landowners. Along the route, it would have three stations, in Dallas, Houston, and Brazos Valley. The Dallas station would be located in the Cedars neighborhood, just south of downtown, near the Interstate 30 and 35 interchange. The Brazos Valley Station would be in Grimes County in the Roans Prairie area along Highway 30. This location would put it roughly equidistant between College Station and Huntsville and would give it access to Navasota and Madisonville via Highway 90. Lastly, the Houston Station would be located at the Northwest Mall site near the US 290 and Interstate 610 Exchange. The Dallas and Houston stations would each have three island platforms measuring 30 feet wide and 705 feet long accommodating six tracks. Meanwhile, the Brazos Valley Station would have two mainline tracks with side platforms measuring 20 feet wide and 705 feet long. The railway would utilize Japanese Tokaido Shinkansen technology, which has not had a single passenger fatality or injury due to derailments or collisions throughout its 50-year-plus history. It would feature N700 series Shinkansen rolling stock, which would reach speeds of up to 320 kilometers per hour connecting Dallas and Houston in only 90 minutes. Each train would consist of eight cars with a seating capacity of 400 people. They would have wide two by two seats separated by an aisle with Wi-Fi, power outlets, and onboard food and drinks. The railway would be powered by a 25 kilovolt overhead electric catenary system and would utilize Central Japan Railway Company's automatic train control signaling technology. It would also feature regenerative braking, helping convert kinetic energy back into electrical energy when the train slows down. 
In total, the Dallas-Houston high-speed rail would cost approximately 30 billion US dollars. Texas Central plans for this cost to be 100% privately funded. The railway would take five years to construct and would use 10 million cubic yards of concrete. Once opened, it would have departures every 30 minutes during peak periods and every hour during off-peak periods. According to Texas Central, it would carry more than 6 million passengers a year by 2029 and more than 13 million by 2050, eventually accounting for 30% of all Dallas-Houston commuter traffic. Before we continue, let me introduce this video's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. With more than 2,000 incredibly detailed tank, plane, helicopter, and ship models that you can lead the charge with in highly immersive PvP battles. The vehicles are historically accurate, spanning over 100 years of development, and are highly customizable, with hundreds of camouflages, historical markings, and 3D decorators. You always have something new to unlock. The gameplay is super intense, and personally, I love the strategic thinking required when surrounded by enemy vehicles in all directions, along with the ability to choose your preferred gameplay style of air, land, or sea all in one game. To play for free now on PC, Xbox Series XS, or PlayStation 5, and previous gen consoles, click the link in the description and receive a massive free bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, account, boosters, and much more. Thank you, War Thunder, and now back to the video. The Dallas-Houston high-speed rail would provide a list of benefits for Texas. First of all, it would slash the current three and a half to five hour long car drive to only 90 minutes. This would connect the fourth and fifth largest cities in the nation, boosting economic growth and tourism. In addition, the rail line would drastically upgrade Texas's Amtrak railway infrastructure, which currently takes about a day to travel between Dallas and Houston. Furthermore, by diverting dangerous car traffic away from I-45, the railway would save hundreds of lives over the course of its operation. This would also lower congestion along I-45, improving commute times for those who continue to drive. Moreover, the project would create 17,000 direct jobs during construction, in addition to 1,400 permanent jobs when operational. Even more, the railway would provide better accessibility for handicapped citizens, and without the traffic, tight quarters, security lines, and extensive boarding processes of driving or flying, would create an overall more pleasant traveling experience. On top of all this, it would be all electric, and would use less energy and emit less carbon dioxide than cars or airplanes, reducing annual CO2 emissions by an estimated 700,000 tons. Lastly, it would serve as a landmark high-speed rail project in the United States, laying the foundation for future projects and a potential high-speed rail network across the country. Despite its potential benefits, the Dallas-Houston high-speed rail project has faced some major challenges. First of all, the project's cost has inflated significantly from an initial $12 billion to $20 billion and now to around $30 billion. In addition, many fear that ridership predictions have been overestimated and that Texans will simply not adapt well to high-speed rail. This is not unfounded. After all, Dallas-Fort Worth and Houston are massive metropolitan areas. Unlike many European or Asian high-speed rail networks, where stations are nestled in the heart of downtown and there is plenty of other public transportation, most commuters using the Dallas-Houston high-speed rail line would first have to drive to the station, park, board their train, and once they arrive in the other city, would then have to find a way to reach their final destination. Not super convenient. But maybe most importantly, the project has faced firm opposition from landowners along the route who are concerned about their property being seized or having it decline in value. Some of these landowners have even organized an advocacy group called Texans Against High Speed Rail. Over the years, they have taken legal action against Texas Central and the Department of Transportation numerous times over the railway's right to use the power of eminent domain to seize property for the project. As they argue, Texas Central is not an operating railway and is therefore not warranted the right to use it. However, in June 2022, the Texas Supreme Court sided with Texas Central in a 5-3 ruling, affirming its right to use eminent domain. Despite this major legal victory, the company is still struggling. Like with Texas TGV 30 years ago, the main problem seems to be funding. 
Texas Central has struggled to find private investors, and as a result, in November 2021, they backtracked on their promise to be 100% privately funded and began bidding for $12 billion in federal loans from the Biden administration through the Railroad Rehabilitation and Improvement Fund. Still though, this funding has not been approved. As a result, over the past couple years, operations have slowed down and the company has gone silent. Then, in May 2022, only a few weeks prior to the decisive Supreme Court ruling in its favor, the CEO of Texas Central, Carlos Aguilar, stepped down, and the board of directors disbanded. Still though, the project is not completely dead. Texas Central Partners is now working with the team at FTI Consulting to continue work, with the company being represented by senior managing director Michael Bowie. However, as of July 2023, the future is uncertain. This lack of information has frustrated property owners. In May 2023, they introduced House Bill 2357, which would require Texas Central to release annual reports on its finances and plans. If passed, it would expose the company's inner workings, helping shed light on the project's true status. Overall, the Dallas-Houston high-speed railway seems amazing on paper. However, along with similar projects such as the California High-Speed Rail, it has revealed the host of financial, logistical, and legal challenges that high-speed rail projects in the US must face. Nevertheless, the project is still alive. If Texas Central can secure additional funding and revitalize the project, in the future, it could have finally come to fruition. If built, it would unite Dallas and Houston with a 21st century rail network, helping transform the USA's infrastructure network. Remember, to play War Thunder for free and receive a massive free bonus pack, sign up through my link in the description. If you'd like to watch more fascinating videos like this one, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.